Hello all, this is the Owl, and today we'll be taking a look at the third volume of Masaki Nakayama's brilliantly terrifying Fuan no Tane series, which some of you may know as the precursor to the even better Fuan no Tane Plus and PTSD Radio. And oh man, let me tell you something right now. Volumes 1 and 2 are a little meh in places, and Volume 3, well, it's kind of the same. Hell, you might even say it's a bit more uneven, with a lot of vignettes that just don't work. However, there are one or two that are kind of amazing, including one specific story that might be among Nakayama's best as well as the most crap your pants terrifying material I've come across in comic form in quite a while. Best, or perhaps that's not the right word. That specific story, well, it's allegedly true. What do I mean? Well, without any further ado, let's dive on in. As mentioned, Volume 3 starts off kind of mediocre, mid, as the kids would say. More weird than frightening. One involves a bunch of crawling eyeballs that pursue a car due to it accidentally driving over some of them, and another, rude, sees a young man awakened by a strange voice calling out to him from the air vents, a voice that turns out to belong to this weird deformed mass of eyes and hair. Pretty standard Nakayama fare to be honest, but the volume does start to pick up speed with power. Another young man has the ability to sense nearby supernatural entities, which give him goosebumps. Entities such as this Sadako-esque apparition. He goes for a walk outside, and oh right, this is interesting encounters a strange bald man hammering away at a stone with, well, a hammer, and he succeeds in breaking it into two pieces. When the man turns around, yeah, yikes a Rooney. Now, I might be mistaken, or just overthinking this, as some of you have informed me I have a tendency to do, but I think that this is a really clever dovetail of two pretty obscure and yet damn freaky Japanese myths, and also something rather creepy from real life. So, the dude here is likely a nod to Nopera Bo, faceless Japanese ghosts that are basically just known for scaring people for the hell of it, and also sometimes being shape-shifting animals, yeah. Japanese mythology often suggests that someone must have been on some spectacularly good shit while coming up with it, but the stone is almost certainly a reference to the Sesho Seki, aka Killing Stone, an ancient artifact in rural Tochigi said to contain an extremely powerful and malevolent spirit, which if the stone was ever broken, would be released onto the world. What makes this a bit odd is that the stone did mysteriously split in half in 2022, long after this manga was published. And yeah, that kind of does look a lot like the image in the manga. And this was apparently followed by some very strange stuff happening in the area, resulting in Shinto priests descending onto the site 
to attempt to pacify said entity. Yep, that is creepy as all hell. And speaking of creepy as all hell, Landlord sees... I think it's implied that the same psychic dude is out with his mates, and we learn that he can also see harmless spirits, like this little Ghibli-esque thing that I swear I've seen somewhere before, but where exactly escapes me. However, the chap suddenly starts yelling for his friends, telling them that they need to get out of the town immediately. Why? Well, it turns out that he saw this colossal nightmare looming over the town. What makes this fun is that we've actually switched to an image that is half actual photograph and half whatever that thing is supposed to be. We do learn at the end of the story that the entire area was wiped out in a massive fireball caused by an exploding chemical plant. Cool, very Stephen King. The next story isn't so much scary as disturbing, featuring a point of view segment from the perspective of a sportsman likely involved in a car accident, trying to psych himself up while clinging to life on a surgical bed, but eventually he succumbs to his injuries and dies. Thanks, Nakayama. Anyway. We get a few more stories that range from okay to meh, with the only really good one being Takahashi's explanation. And this one is vintage Nakayama. A bunch of office workers are about to head home at night, but one doesn't want to leave. He explains that he keeps running into someone or something that he calls funny eyes, which turns out to be this strange looking woman question mark who frequently appears out of nowhere rushes up to him and attacks before telling him it isn't you and running off again his friends are freaked out instructing him to go to the police but all he does say is well we're on the fifth floor and points sure enough the woman is somehow peering through the window at them looking furious. Whoa. Our next story, still, isn't that scary, but it's more a case study in how to make you just feel unsettled. The dark figure of a man is sometimes visible in the evening standing near a lamppost on the street. It doesn't do anything and only stands there stock still in place. No matter what other stuff occupies the spot, the figure never moves. One day, a guy sees that someone threw out a perfectly good chest of drawers and decides to take it to sell as it looks to be in good condition, which yes, is a thing in Japan. He then opens the doors and sees, yup, no thanks. The next few stories range from strange to silly to, oh right, there's one that is just out of nowhere bizarrely disturbing, where a woman suddenly dismembers herself. Yeah, can't show you much of that at all. Rest assured that it is insanely graphic and pretty damn gross. This is one thing about Nakayama. There is always one story in every one of his manga that is uncharacteristically gory or booby. I have to wonder if this is an Oppenheimer situation where it's done deliberately to have his work categorized as a seinen. I honestly have no idea. Anyway, patrolling is a goodie. A student is in class, bored and daydreaming, when she turns to look out of the window and sees something inexplicable. Another girl, in uniform, is walking along outside the window. Initially, she thinks it might be someone somehow walking along the ridge of the window itself, but nope, she's walking on fresh air. 
The teacher does notice that said student is not paying attention and proceeds to tell her off. But when she looks again, something is looking back. Ha! Huh. That reminds me of that one absolutely bonkers jump scare in Smile, which no, I won't spoil, on a minor tangent. Smile is actually pretty damn good and bloody scary for a Western horror movie. I'll admit, it had me twitchy afterwards. Where was I? Oh, right. The rest of the volume is, to be frank, kind of crap. Until we hit the end, and here. Oh man, here it is. This story is very creatively titled Final Chapter, and it is testicle explodingly good. Now, by way of explanation, Nakayama tends to include these here and there in his anthologies. Personal anecdotes of his own alleged encounters with the supernatural or macabre. And this one, while it doesn't quite top instead of an epilogue from Fuan no Tane Plus, or his buck wild, why this manga will never be completed story from PTSD Radio, this one, well, it sort of stayed with me. Let's give it a look. Nakayama starts by confirming that some of the vignettes in Fuan no Tane do indeed come from people telling him about creepy stuff they've experienced or heard about before he goes on to recount what happened to him in the second year of middle school as a member of the swimming team. At the request of a team member, who wished for them to be able to practice after hours, they went on a trip to a nearby city, which, note, city in Japan can refer to anything from something only slightly bigger than a village to a sprawling metropolis like Tokyo, with their destination turning out to be firmly the former. After arriving, at the ancient run-down dormitories in the middle of farmland Hokkaido that really do look a lot like where I lived for my first month in Japan, which, no, is not at all creepy. They realize that the pool is a small, shabby outdoors affair and tinted with plastic. As their coach is delayed, the students decide to just get to training and before they knew it was dark out, Nakayama and a few students went to the bathroom, but when they returned, the entire swimming team was suddenly standing outside of the pool tent, staring in, in silence, looking as if they had just seen something terrible. Curious, Nakayama looked in himself, but didn't see anything, and none of the other students wanted to enlighten him. Regardless, after the coach locked up and they all went to the dorms, likely at the other students' urging, they went back home that night with nobody willing to go back to the pool. While Nakayama never saw anything himself, he did eventually get another student to tell him what everyone had seen. At the back of the night-darkened pool, in the fourth lane, they had spotted something strange. Something that had, on closer inspection, turned out to be the bloated, rotting corpse of an unknown student, floating there and staring at them with dead eyes. Sleep well, everyone. But yeah, that's the end of that. Pretty damn good, all told, albeit uneven. Now, as I mentioned last time, Fuan no Tane was followed by the even better Fuan no Tane Plus. So, if you'd like a deep dive on that nightmare, well, hmm, how about you type, let's say cake or ice cream, depending on which you think is the better dessert in the comments. Otherwise, before we finish for the day, I want to give a huge thanks, as always, to my fantastic patrons. Jake Reagan, Piece of Yeast, El Espresso, Cheerful Satanist, Starwin Marwin, 
Question Man 6, Kel Kaur, Jacob Ramsey, Crazy, Opinion Custard, Woggle, Inukia Koji, Rose Montgomery, Lance Goebel, Paul Norberger, Rafferty, Aaron Arnold, The Hedgehog Gamer, Simone, XTC Pill, B Empress, Jake, Ranger Danger, and Cheshire Quill. If you want to see more like this, why not stick around? Subscribe, bell, all that good YouTube stuff, you know the drill. If you want to hear me say your name, get early access to most of my videos, as well as some fun patron-only extras, have some extra perks on the Discord, and you know, help Mrs. Owl and I out or buy Baby Owl the necessaries, and ensure that I can keep on doing what I do into 2024. I won't lie, it's a bit touch and go right now. Why not take a look at our Patreon? If you want to chit chat about, well, basically anything, drop by our Twitch. We usually stream on Sunday mornings and afternoons, or drop by our Discord. Take care, my friends, and cheers. This is The Owl, signing off.